Okay, Recon's video on Wednesday, the 28th of December 2022. It's just gone 4.07 a.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. And if you celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a great Christmas. We had a particularly good Christmas here in Saint-Malo in France. Do like the way the French do Christmas. I say this every year. Uh, they don't take it too seriously and they emphasize kind of the good stuff like friends and family and food rather than the present giving and uh, the kind of more commercial aspects of Christmas. But it's over now and we're on our way to Hawaii. Uh, going to be taking our time getting there. It takes about a week for us to get there because we're going by Paris and then Dublin and then San Francisco and eventually to the island of Kauai. Anyway, um, it's the end of the year and everybody's thinking about kind of big picture, long-term positioning and what opportunities there might be kind of for long-term holds during the next year. Last week, I put up a uh, very well-received video, got double the normal uh, kind of views I get on a video, which is which was a reaction video to the Felix Zuloff interview, where he was talking about the opportunities in long-term bonds and the TLT ETF. This week, uh, there was a very good interview on the Jay Martin show with Milton Berg, where he's talking about the opportunity in equities and particularly Chinese equities. Milton Berg, if you don't know the name, very successful. Um, he's kind of heavily technical focused, but he's a macro kind of trader. Uh, and I'd say kind of 70-30 technicals versus fundamentals based on what I've kind of seen and read. He used to work with George Soros and Stanley Druckenmiller. So he has extremely good pedigree. And I thought it'd be worth clipping a couple of minutes from the interview on the Jay Martin show, where he's talking about equities versus commodities, and then the equities opportunity in China. So here you go. So I'm not a, a, not a believer in, a, in, in long-term, in owning commodities for the long-term. Again, you want to own it for a cycle. Commodities have already, already had a nice, a nice strong move over the last two years. I don't think commodities in general it's a place to invest at this point. Stocks which have declined dramatically and with expectations are very, very low in stocks and in equities. And for example, Chinese stocks in particular, where expectations are very low. That's really where it want to be at this time. There's not suggesting that commodities aren't going to move up you know, if, if inflation continues. But I think the safest bet and the most likely bet is to invest in, in equities uh, at, at this time rather rather to invest in, in commodities. That, that's, that's the argument. Okay. No, that sounds interesting. Now, then... Coming back to Chinese equities, what sort of implications do you think you know China's reopening will have on those companies? So I think China really is a good bet. Can I guarantee that China will be great for the next 20 years? I certainly can't. But I certainly would say that considering that the Chinese stock market is down 60%, considering some of the most innovative companies, um, or let's say let's say what some of the most innovative copycat companies are in China, and the fact that China has over a billion people and all these people are coming out of poverty into, into a middle class, I think China is a great is a great investment in this time. Whether the whether or not the um the fact that they're going to make change in the COVID policy, whether that's important or not, it, it's possible. But again, if I make my decisions based on the fundamentals, I'm going to make mistakes because there's so many different ways to interpret fundamentals. If you're going to make the make the decision based on the actions of the of the, of the asset itself, and based on the historical probabilities of how the asset will continue continue performing based on on its action, uh, then it's a safe bet. So again, China's on 61 percent. Um, it bottomed on, on a cyclical, a very important cyclical day. The Chinese government last March, I think March 15th, said they're going to protect the companies. They have been lowering rates. They, so I, I think China is a very good bet. So there we go. There's Milton Berg on the opportunity that he sees at the moment in Chinese equities. The question is, how do you take advantage of that? Because you've got some single stock kind of options or ETFs that you could trade. Uh, we've got some of the China uh, individual stocks available on the NASDAQ. I think uh, Alibaba is, is on there, so I'll show you the chart of uh, Alibaba. But there are three large China ETFs that you might consider as well. Always go to etfdb.com, which is my go-to online source for uh, searching for ETFs. Uh, gives you a really good rundown of uh, the largest ETFs in the space. And when you do that, you find out that there are three uh, China-focused ETFs that you need to kind of look at. One is MCHI, uh, the next one is FXI, and the third one is KWEB. Um, they're all roughly the same kind of size. Uh, MCHI is the largest. 
uh, but the other two are worth considering as well. And I've just put them on this chart here that you can see the relative performance versus the S&P 500. So this is going back to about 2013 here, and we're looking at a relative strength chart here. Quite easy to set up on TradeStation. You add the four different uh, data streams to a chart. This, uh, the green is SPY. Uh, for the S&P 500, I'm looking at a weekly chart here, and then we've added three different data streams. MCHI, which is in blue, uh, FXI, which is in yellow, and then KWEB, uh, which is in red. Uh, and we look at this on a relative strength chart. You right click on your chart, you go to style, and you select the percent change chart here, uh, where it puts all three uh, side by side. So the first thing that I found fascinating about this chart is that over a 10-year period, the Chinese equities have basically gone nowhere. We've got a plus 19, a plus 3, and a negative 26 return here with these three different Chinese ETFs. However, the S&P 500 has done 172% over that time period, which is extraordinary given the you know, fundamentals and the GDP growth in China over that time period. The stock market has not uh, done as well as the U.S. stock market. Hmm. And then the relative performance of these is all driven by the weightings that we have in each of these three different ETFs. So we got MCHI here in blue, uh, which is the most diversified of uh, the three ETFs. And top to bottom over the peak uh, here in 2021 uh, is down about 60%. Uh, the least uh, kind of volatile of these is the FXI uh, ETF here in yellow, also down about 60% from the peak, kind of uh, peak to trough kind of down here, uh, but it's the least volatile of those, and that's because FXI is heavily weighted towards the finance sector in China. But the big move here in red uh, is KWEB, which is top to bottom down 80%, uh, from the peak up here uh, to the trough a couple of uh, weeks ago. And that's because it is heavily weighted towards stocks. It's the equivalent of the QQQs uh, for the uh, Chinese um, markets. Um, you can also see another thing that the equity markets in China kind of topped out differently than the US. So coming up to uh, COVID kind of high at the beginning of 2020, everybody kind of peaked. Here's the S&P 500 and then peaks in the Chinese market. And we all had a big sell off for those first two or three months, but then we bottomed them all three markets and then we raced away. Kind of topped out in China though, at the beginning of 2021. And the equities market in the US kind of kept on going and topped out at the beginning of 2022. So it's kind of interesting. So we've had a longer and steeper kind of decline uh, in the Chinese markets than we have in the US markets. So the question is, is this going to be the year of the China kind of bounce back in markets? And can we see this in the charts? So I'm going to show you the uh, three ETFs and also Alibaba using our better indicators. First of all, we're going to use the traditional uh, setup of the better indicators where we've got two panels side by side. Left-hand side is everything to do with volume. Uh, we've got two volume indicators here, better momentum below the price bars, which is a volume-based momentum indicator. And then on the price bars themselves, we've got better pro-am, which is using the average trade size to identify professional and amateur activity. Professionals are in blue and amateurs are in yellow. Then on the right-hand side, everything to do with price, and we use better sine wave here, which is the plate of spaghetti below the uh, price bars that is calculating the cyclical activity in three different time frames. And we use those cyclical crosses uh, to give us support and resistance in the three different time frames. And then breaks of support and resistance gives us, gives us breaks into trends. And uptrends and strength is shown in red. Uh, downtrends and weakness is shown in white. And then the backgrounds are printed gray uh, when the two sets of indicators are both in downtrends. We've got volume and price both in a downtrend and they're printed in red uh, or a dark uh, shade of red uh, when we've got uptrends in price and volume together. So that's a, the combo indicator beneath, uh, behind the price bars. So the first thing to note is we're still in the downtrend in MCHI. However, some good things kind of gone on here. We have seen exhaustion sell at the beginning of April and a bullish divergence pattern kind of come in here. We kept on going down to the lows here, down into the you know low 40s, and we have had a bounce from there. But not a whole bunch of blue professional bars kind of down here, not a whole bunch of blue professional bars kind of buying the breakout. And so the trailing stop with better pro-am has not kind of trailed down yet, and we've not broken up through that.
but cyclically maybe we have kind of done enough damage on the downside and I talk about the end of trends rippling through the time frames here we've got some pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame here that gives us a kind of a left shoulder then we get pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame potentially giving us a head uh, move here but uh, it's still weak and we keep on kind of crashing through but we bounce from there we've got some red bars kind of going on here showing that we've got a little bit of strength in terms of price but uh, it's maybe not all done on the downside we potentially have to come up to resistance on the highest time frame when then these two thick lines kind of come together come back up and kind of test down into those lows so it's a little bit early in terms of MCHI bottoming uh, and kind of changing into an uptrend but that might have been the low that uh, was signaled kind of down here kind of weak selling at that point with all these bullish divergences kind of coming together here so potentially that's good kind of area between where we are today and back into those lows that might be a good area to kind of pick up MCHI next one FXI which is the less volatile finance based uh, ETF same type of pattern here you can see here's the blue professional bars kind of coming in at the lows with exhaustion sell signals going on there quite a lot of blue professional bars kind of buying this breakout in anticipation of it kind of trending higher but it kind of goes nowhere we come back down but again at the lows down here no blue professional bars no amateur bars in a test and so on so we don't have a lot of confirmation there the last blue professional bar that came in here uh, was a couple of days ago and that is potentially buying a breakout and you can see that we've come back up with a strong move uh, at this last trading day and potentially we're breaking through 30 here which would break us into an uptrend on both time frames same type of deal here uh, we put in some end of trends on this left shoulder uh, we tried to make uh, that was just an end of trend on the way up we haven't seen an end of trend on the lowest time frame here and we broke through those two supports and so you know the market is still weak and on the uh, price chart we've not uh, changed into an uptrend but breaking above 30 potentially that'll change us into an uptrend so it's kind of spiked down at that point uh, no exhaustion sell no blue professional bars kind of down here so so not a lot of interest yet in uh, FXI but uh, let's see you know somewhere between where we are today and kind of testing into those lows might be uh, good for kind of a resting buy order so now KWEB which is the kind of tech focused uh, ETF and here you can see the market is spiked down a lot less than these previous charts when you look at kind of the move down these were pretty violent uh, kind of test down into those lows uh, but KWEB because we've done so much damage on the downside kind of moved uh, less aggressively into these kind of new lows so similar pattern uh, exhaustion sold blue professional bars kind of come in here at 2530 uh, but we come back down amateurs kind of trading down into that kind of testing move here and then at 18 they kind of get picked up and uh, we're close to breaking back up through this kind of zone where the professionals uh, were kind of interested here above kind of 33 and on better sine wave we've already broken into strength here so as soon as we get above kind of 33 we'll get two uh, indicators kind of uh, playing side by side the background will turn red and we've got both got volume and price kind of working together in an uptrend um, same type of thing a left shoulder made with pullback to end of trends whole family of them kind of going on here trying to catch that little low finally we get made here then pull back to end of trend on the intermediate time frame we kind of test into those lows go a little bit further past it then break back up so of those three ETFs KWEB kind of looks like the strongest uh, and most likely to kind of rally at this point but you might be also interested in taking an individual stock Alibaba is one of the biggest kind of components uh, of that market and let's kind of see what that chart looks like here not unlike KWEB uh, here in terms of that testing down move the test into those lows uh, was not as severe as uh, the FXI chart or MCH and you can see here there's our blue professional bars exhaustion sell going on uh, flush flush amateur down bars with Rambo patterns here right at the lows so Rambo patterns uh, stands for a potential reversal of an amateur breakout or breakdown so here we've got the move into the lows being led by the amateurs and so that's suspect and we're getting a bounce from there which is good and here same thing pull back to end of trend on the uh, lowest time frame showing a left shoulder then pull back to end of trend 
uh, showing ahead of this move and then we're going through some cyclical activity after those trending moves have ended here uh, and we're breaking into an uptrend. So actually Alibaba, uh, the chart for this I really like, uh, break back above kind of 94 here, uh, breaks into confirmed uptrend on better sine wave. We've got a ways to go in terms of uh, the trailing stop and better pro-am between its kind of 90 level and 124. But if we see any kind of blue professional bars uh, over the next uh, few days and weeks uh, here in Alibaba showing us that we've got professionals kind of uh, following up there, um, buying this kind of uh, low down here below 100 and then kind of getting the move going, that would be very interesting. So uh, those are the traditional views of the better indicators using two panels kind of side by side. Let's see if we've got some signals using the single uh, chart view where we've got all three indicators together giving us triple signals. Um, so here the signals are shown with dotted vertical uh, white lines for short trends, uh, short trades and uh, red lines for long trades. So MCHI you can see here kind of uh, topped out last year 2021 bang into a downtrend. We've got no signals going on, but we've got three things happening. Exhaustion sell bullish divergence. That's one of the three indicators for a triple. We oversold with a background in red. Number two, we just need to break above better pro-am or some blue professional bars to kind of come in on MCHI to uh, give us a triple signal there. So MCHI not signaled uh, yet. Uh, let's look at FXI. Just load that in. Bang. Similar thing, uh, we've got a sell signal here uh, last year, bottom down here. Yes, we've got the trailing stop happening here. We've got our exhaustion sell bullish divergence. So that's one, two and three likely to trigger uh, if we get above the 30 level on FXI. But the move in FXI, because it's kind of a lower beta uh, type ETF, is going to be not as uh, kind of extreme as trading KWEB. So let's look at KWEB type that in, bang, and here we go. We've got some signals happening over the last couple of months. We didn't get a short signal up at the highs um, because this uh, exhaustion sell signal got, got in the way. Uh, we'd had exhaustion buy but no bearish divergence and then we kind of uh, traded this move quickly. Um, we tried to hold here at the 50 level, came back down to the 20s and 30s level here and there's the blue professional bars and we're testing into those lows and then a break back above 33 will give us another uh, kind of, well it won't give us a signal long because we've already got exhaustion by bearish divergence in the way here. But that's kind of short covering rally, kind of getting the move going. But above this kind of 30 type level, 35 type level, uh, that would be a confirmed uptrend in KWEB. And then lastly, let's just look at Alibaba and see if we've got some signals happening here. Short signals at uh, 2021, that's kind of a spurious signal there because that was just getting the move going with the exhaustion sell at that point. And we're down here at the lows. We got two, of, two out of three signaling, so we got exhaustion sell bullish divergence. We're oversold with background in red. We just need to get above this level. So what I'd be looking for is another blue professional bar to kind of come in in the next days and weeks for to trail this uh, better pro-am trailing stop down um, to that blue professional bar and then a break above that would show that we're breaking into an uptrend. So there we go. Last week we talked about potential opportunity in TLT, which is not signaled yet, but it's kind of lining up in the next few weeks and months. Uh, and today we talked about uh, China equities and potentially getting into BABA, Alibaba, B-A-B-A, -A, um, using a single stock uh, kind of strategy or a more diversified approach, getting into KWEB uh, as being the high, high beta kind of opportunity for China equities there. So there we go. Hope your trading is going well.